This snack weighs four ounces. It's popcorn. Shh. Now look on this chart for the price of one ounce of popcorn. It costs zero dollars and ten cents for one ounce. Multiply zero dollars and ten cents by four. The bag of popcorn costs zero dollars and forty cents. This bag weighs more than one pound. There are sixteen ounces in one pound, so this snack weighs eighteen ounces. I added sixteen ounces and two ounces to get eighteen ounces. It's trail mix. Shh. Now look on this chart to find the cost. Each ounce of trail mix costs twenty-five cents. Multiply the price for one ounce by the number of ounces. Multiply zero dollars and twenty-five cents by eighteen. The trail mix costs four dollars and fifty cents. This snack weighs fifty hundredths of an ounce. Fifty hundredths is the same as one half ounce. It's bird seed. Shh. Now look on this chart to find that one ounce of bird seed costs twelve cents. So multiply zero dollars and twelve cents by fifty hundredths ounces. This snack weighs two hundred grams. It's popcorn. Shh. Now look at this chart to find the cost for one hundred grams. One hundred grams costs thirty-five cents. Since the bag weighs two hundred grams, multiply zero dollars and thirty-five cents by two. Two hundred grams of popcorn costs seventy cents. Two ounces are less than three ounces. This is the right chute to use. Four ounces are more than three ounces. Four ounces are less than six ounces. This is the right chute to use. This bag weighs six ounces. This is the right chute to use. This chute is for bags that weigh six ounces or more. Twelve ounces are less than one pound. One pound equals sixteen ounces. This is the right chute to use. One pound two ounces is more than one pound. One pound two ounces is less than one pound eight ounces. This is the right chute to use. Two pounds four ounces are more than one pound eight ounces. This is the right chute to use. One and fifty hundredths ounces is less than two and fifty hundredths ounces. This is the right chute to use. Three and fifty hundredths ounces are more than two and fifty hundredths ounces. This is the right chute to use. This bag weighs one hundred grams. This is the right chute to use. This is the chute for bags that weigh one hundred grams or less. Two hundred grams are more than one hundred grams. Two hundred grams are less than three hundred grams. This is the right chute to use.
just stand there, you have a customer! Where's the clerk? Testimate how much money you need to buy the yo-yo. Round its price up to the nearest 10 cents. 59 cents is about 60 cents. So you need about 60 cents to buy the yo-yo. Testimate how much money you need to buy the popcorn and postcards. First round the price of the popcorn up to the nearest 10 cents. 39 cents is almost 40 cents. Next, round up the price of the postcards to 80 cents. 40 cents plus 80 cents is $1.20. Round up when you're working with money and you'll be sure to have enough. To estimate how much money you need to buy the juice and the T-Rexes, round up the price of the juice to the nearest 10 cents. 77 is almost 80. Next, round up the price of the T-Rexes to $6. 80 cents plus $6 is $6.80. The customer gives $1 for a 67 cent purchase. The change due is 33 cents. Start counting back change by saying the price, 67 cents. Start counting back the change with the smallest value coin first, the penny. Give the customer a penny and say 68 cents. Give the next penny and say 69 cents. Give the last penny and say 70 cents. Next, give a nickel and say 75 cents. Finally, give a quarter and say $1. The quarter brings the total up to the amount the customer paid. So you are done. The customer gives $3 for a $2.56 purchase. Always start counting back change by saying the total amount of the purchase, $2.56. Begin giving change with the smallest coin you need to use. Give the customer a penny and say $2.57. Count out another penny and say $2.58. $2.59. Now you can use a bigger coin. Give a nickel and say $2.65. Now give a dime. $2.75. And a quarter brings the total to three dollars. The quarter brings the total up to the amount the customer paid. So you are done. The customer gives ten dollars for a seven dollar and fifty nine cent purchase. Always start counting back change by saying the total amount of the purchase, seven dollars and fifty nine cents. Begin giving change with the smallest coin you need to use. Give the customer a penny and say $7.60.
If you had quarters, you could give the customer a nickel and then a dime to bring the count up to seven dollars and seventy-five cents. But suppose you are out of quarters. Use dimes instead. Seven dollars and seventy cents. Seven dollars and eighty cents. Seven dollars and ninety cents. Eight dollars. Now you can use whole dollar bills. Give a one dollar bill and say nine dollars. Give another dollar and say ten dollars. The last dollar brings the total up to the amount the customer paid. So you are done. Because we need those scarab earrings back. No problem. They're right over there in the drawer. That's weird. One's gone. And you'll never guess what Emmy found. All I know is I put both earrings into this bag last night, and now there's only one and this shiny button. Hmm. You're certain that you put them both in there? Of course I'm sure. And in the middle of all this, Amy's friend Zach showed up. Can I help too? Why, of course. We need everyone's help. Follow me. We'll search every room until we find that eerie. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on. You gotta help me. If we don't find that earring, I'm, I'm, well, you know. So, come on! Smartest woman who ever lived. 
And she knows lots of famous people. Like whom? Like the vice president. He came to our charity cook-off and... Of the United States? Yeah. Baked fudge brownies right here in this kitchen. Wow. Fudge brownies. And one time... Emmy, dear. Telephone. Come on. We'll check the kitchen later. the paper sacks with tasty snacks! Ah! Snack packing is the routine with this cool machine! Look at the weight. Scroll and find the correct row. Look at the country. Find the country column, where the row and the column meet, is the correct postage for the letter. Click there. The priority delivery cost is in special services. The special services cost is $4.40. Now weigh the letter. Find the country where the letter is going. Then use the table to find where the weight row and country column meet. But don't click. Instead, use the calculator to add the regular postage of $2.90 plus $4.40 for priority delivery. The total cost to mail this letter is $7.30. Now, enter this amount on the postal scale and click Enter. That's all there is to it. The information on this chart will help you calculate postage. This letter to Canada weighs 5 ounces. 
The first ounce costs 40 cents. But ounces over the first only cost 23 cents each. Use the calculator if you want. We can multiply 23 cents by 4. This product is the cost for the extra ounces. Then we add the cost for the first ounce. Now enter your total on the postal scale. Remember to click enter. That's it. Now you try. One third cup plus one third cup equals two thirds cup plus another third cup equals one cup. One fourth cup plus one fourth cup equals two fourths cup plus one fourth cup equals three fourths cup. Plus one fourth cup equals one cup. The one cup measure holds the same amount as the two half cup measures. The half cup measure holds the same amount as two fourth cup measures. One cup contains eight fluid ounces. Four cup measures fill two pint measures. Two cups are the same as one pint. Two pint measures fill one quart measure. One quart is the same as two pints or four cups. You can have a winter vacation at any time of the year, somewhere around the world. You can have a winter vacation at any time of the year, somewhere around the world. Somewhere around the world, there's always warm weather. Somewhere around the world, there is always warm weather. There are many places in this world where in autumn, the leaves on trees change to incredible colors. There are many places in this world where in autumn, the leaves on trees change to incredible colors. In the springtime, new life bursts out everywhere.
In the springtime, new life bursts out everywhere.
Check out the solar-powered car. That Newton, what will he rig up next? Emmy's clipboard. Lucky it didn't rain last night. All her plans would have been washed out.
Lily's clipboard. Lucky it didn't rain last night. All her plans would have been washed out. this. I come here to get a story and end up looking like an ad for a laundry detergent. Hey Zach, what happened? I thought you said you'd help me work on my fort. Oh yeah, I just thought, couldn't we get some lunch? Okay, we'll grab some food and eat while we work. Great idea.
Hey, who's the musician? My dad, but I'm learning how to play too. Which instrument? I'll give you a hint. I sit down when I play it, but I hold part of it in my hand. Okay. You sit down to play either the piano or drum. But you can't hold a piano. So that must mean drums. Snoop, it's the cello. Cello? I don't see any cello in this room. I didn't say the instrument was in this room. No, <laughs> you didn't. It's down the hall. Want to see it? Sure. Come on. is a minotaur. It was a mythical beast that was half man and half bull. Whenever somebody went into its maze, they never came back out alive. One day, a girl named Ariadne fell in love with a boy named Theseus and told him how to find his way back out. How was that? She gave him a ball of golden thread so he could unwind it as he went in and find his way back out. So where's your golden thread? It's just a story. Good. I'd hate to meet any minotaurs in there. Whew. I don't know. Might be fun. Oh, boy. Am I glad you're here. Something terrible happened here at the Quetel Museum last night. One of the scarab earrings has been stolen right out from under my beak. They were Cleopatra's favorites, worth over a million bucks. If we don't get it back, they're gonna make parrot pot pie out of me. Mm -hmm. You just gotta help. Okay, okay. Let me tell you, it all started with Newton, Emmy, and Aunt Marie. Did the jewelry help with your homework assignment? Good, because we need those scarab earrings back. No problem. They're right over there in the drawer. That's weird. One's gone. And you'll never guess what Emmy found. All I know is that I put both earrings into this bag last night, and now, there's only one, and this shiny button. Hmm, you're certain that you put them both in there? Of course I'm sure. And in the middle of all this, Emmy's friend Zach showed up. Can I help too? Why, of course. We need everyone's help. Follow me. We'll search every room until we find that eerie. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on, you gotta help me. If we don't find that earring, I'm, I'm, well, you know. So, come on!
Load of the biceps on Aunt Marie. Even the quaddles have some shady relatives. Father Quaddle. They're locked! Maybe you'll have better luck.
turn those lights back on. Thanks so much. Look! The pack rat's nest! And Emmy just found it! <laughs> Emmy, turn those lights back on! Thanks so much!
my dad, but I'm learning how to play too. Which instrument? I'll give you a hint. I sit down when I play it, but I hold part of it in my hand. Okay. You sit down to play either the piano or drum. But you can't hold a piano. So that must mean drums. Snoop, it's the cello. Cello? I don't see any cello in this room. I didn't say the instrument was in this room. No, you didn't. It's down the hall. Want to see it? Sure. Come on. And this is the parlor. Ooh, what a great looking truck. Aunt Marie bought it at an auction in Cairo, but she found out that someone was going to steal it from her, so she had to figure out a clever way to get it out of the country. Tell me more. Promise not to put it in your story, cross your heart, and hope to die? No problem. She took it apart and shipped each piece to a friend in a different city. When she got home, all the pieces were waiting for her, and she put it back together. Wow, that's clever. I found some old pictures of Aunt Marie in Cairo. Want to see them? Lead the way. Well, what a relief. Now we have two. Thank you, Emmy. Ah, let's give credit where it belongs. I mean, they helped, but they couldn't have done it without me. Let's not quibble. Everybody helped. Whoa, the guests for the party will be here any minute. I better get ready. Come on, PK, you can keep me company. Just as long as you steer clear of that very pot pie recipe. <laughs> now, young man, did you say something about an interview? Thanks just the same, Miss Quattle. But if you don't mind, I'd like to interview Emmy instead. Me? Are you kidding? I think my readers would like to see the Quattle Museum through your eyes. And hear all about the mystery of the scarce scarab. The mystery of the scarce scarab. Hey, that's a great lead. Thanks. Come on, Emmy. Of course it's a great lead. When I was a reporter, great leads were my specialty. <laughs> Hello? 